Hey guys, it's Forsaken Reality here with the second part of the survival game kit version 2 in the multiplayer system version 2 merge tutorial video. And in this one we're going to be continuing on where we left off and this is what we're going to have at the end of this video. We're still going to have some more things to do with some uh, weapon uh, specific features like the sways and, and the lean. We're going to redo a little bit so that it's not just swaying like this. We're going to move the cat, use the swaying or uh, leaning from a uh, multi MP system rather than the survival game kit because survival game kit's just overboard, if you ask me. And we're also going to redo some of the aim stuff and the running. Uh, the aim event will use the multiplayer systems eventually, but right now this is still using survival game kits. So you still see there's still some things we're still going to have to do in the next video, but this is what we would have now. The sprinting animation would work with whatever animation weapon you'd have in your hand. And just for an example... I had the SMG put in here. I should have equipped it as, yeah, the visual model for the SMG. You can see that that's in there. There's still some, you know, there's the stuttering in the camera movements. We're also going to look at that in the next video as well, which will be some more of the animation blueprint stuff we need to look into. We'll have our full body running and everything like that working just fine. And it'll work with, obviously, Survival Game Kit's inventory. So without further ado, we will begin setting up this. First thing I'm going to do is just move my testing project out of the way. And now we're here on this one. First thing we're going to look into is setting up the fine rotation. You'll notice that when we're on equip, we can look down and you can see your face like that. But we use, once we add the multiplayer system rotation, we'll be fine with that. So you want to open up your blueprints, your character, and your survival game kit master character. Now we're on a multiplayer system, blueprints, and our master BP. And in here we're going to want our... I believe it's in the movement. Yeah. So first we're just going to take this bend. And do this piece by piece so it's a little more easier to understand what's going on. So the bend's there. So that's just for the spine rotation specifically. And this is what I mean where you can break down assets and make it. They're so much easier to, to merge them with each other when you break them down piece by piece. And know exactly what's going on everywhere. So we want to. Control C this. And I'm just going to control V that right here for now. If you get an error, you want to just refresh. Create this variable. It's going to be a replicated variable. I just want to check and yeah, it's set to 1. So if you want to compile this and set this to 1, so you can see it and compile. And now we have our server, or Spine rotation variable set right here. Next thing. I guess I can just look at my reference project over here. We're going to want to go to our event graph. Not, our, not in here though. Our event graph in here, and our master SGK master character. Then we're going to go to inputs and we're going to look for our up down movement right here. And we actually need a function from here for our spine rotation, so that would be in our multiplayer system controller. Just blueprints, and I believe it's in the data. MPS controller right here. And we're looking for spine rotation at the moment. So control C all of this, then we'll go back to the spot game kit character.
set that here and this is going to be a pure function make sure you have that box picked paste all that in here and I'm going to right click get controller because we need our controller for this as we move it, we're moving it from a controller to our player. So we need a controller of the player. And plug just plug that in like that. Yeah. Now we have our spine rotation set up. And our character, I believe that's everything we need to do in here. Oh yeah, we need to go back to our inputs and actually call that. So in our inputs, we're gonna call our Spine rotation function, and that's going to be the value for our client bend. So when we're looking up and down, it's going to it's going to get the values for our spine rotation. It's going to send it to the server and the client, and and we're going to pick the, those values up in our animation blueprint. So I'm going to go to your Slava game pit, third person anim. And I believe this is, yeah, it's going to be in our update anim. So, event graph, update anim. Now I like to have an update graph. So I'm just going to show you how you'd how to set that up and just so you don't have so many of these functions you can control you can copy that or controls see it and then you want to that's all uh, the update anim event and then you want to go to your update graph and control v and now we have our update graph created and Maybe not do that. Okay, just forget about the update graph for now. You can control Z back until it disappears again. Just completely forget that I did that. I'll look into why that. I know that I know why that issue pops up. There's just a few references that need to be refreshed, but I don't want to deal with that in this video right this moment. Just waste till it was waste on needed times. So we'll go back to our update and. Um, and just looking for my character component. Just gonna search for this. I'm just gonna, for now, we will just create a new variable called bend. Call that a float. We're gonna get a, go to components and get our character component. And I did something wrong back here that we're gonna wanna fix. See this bend variable right here? We're going to want to go to our blueprints, components, and our character component. Create a variable called bend. Make that a float. Replicated, not rep notify. And bend is one by default. Now we want to get our character component. In our in our SK master character in the event graph, we're gonna set the bend in our character component instead, so that we can use it in our animation blueprint. Because Survival Game Kit doesn't cast to the character; it gets the character component instead. That's how it gets all of its variables from its play from the for the player from the component. 
and control C, bend, set, control and drag this out, control and click to drag. And there, now we have our bend coming from our component. And now we can feed that from our component, bend. And normally you would right, you can either right click and promote to a variable and that would automatically create this, but we set created this right here. So it's going to put that right here for now. So that'll be fine. And there's a few things we want to get rid of in here. So this is one of them. You want to go your empty hands. This aim offset, we're not going to be using this. So delete this. Just plug this in like that. Uh, there's a few things around we need to get rid of. We're going to get rid of this. So we're going to be using the, the uh, multiplayer system's aim offset instead. Oh, wait, control Z. So, um, yeah, I was going to delete this whole thing. And upper body base get rid of the procedural aim offset and that should be everything there because we're just gonna everything is just gonna be procedural right it's just gonna be defaulted as procedural and then you could have your standard still if you wanted to do that um okay so our bend now so we're gonna want to go to our multiplayer system blueprints could set it up quickly, but I'd rather just go into our mult in here, go to our atom graph. And since we're working on the bend right now, we can take out the bend code right here. So you want to control C, and control V. Hold Alt and click to break that for now. I'm just going to plug that into the end there. I've been debating on if I was going to use this holstered variable to determine if, we're, if we are not holding a weapon. I'm just going to create it for now and set it and leave it at default since that will work. And just plug this in like that. Just gonna move things down. The way this is working basically is if it's true, this is one, and if it's not true, then it's zero. If you hold it over here, you can actually see like if uh converts a bool to a float from zero or one, so true is zero. I mean zero false is zero, true is one. So a false will just multiply it by zero and leave it defaulted. And it's the same thing over here. Just checking to make sure I didn't make any slight changes to that. Compile and save. Let's test it out. When we play now, we should not hit our chin. When we look up and down. Let's see how things are looking now. We still have our everything looking all funky like that. Okay, what should we do next on the list? Okay, I'm going to quickly deal with the leaning camera. So we're not going to, we're going to be using the multiplayer systems leaning. So 
you can literally select all of this in here. This is all code that deals with the leaning camera. And we don't need it. So you can delete. Boom. Gone. Does not exist anymore. So now when we lean, still need to do some adjustments when we add in the multiplayer system lean. Character leans and, and he tilts around the center of the screen, if you notice. But the camera still needs to be fixed up some or some of the animations. Um, just going to pause for a moment and look through my notes. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my game. Blueprints. Or sorry, we're going to go to Survival Game Kit. Blueprints, items, multiple. And our M4, which we're using for our test. And it's going to scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. I'm going to look at our hand dinos. We're going to disable this and this for now. We use right hand and use left hand. Use left hand when sprinting. Disable that. looking through my this Friday to see what else we're going to do in here. And that should do something. Let's see what we got here now. Oh yeah, I get, I see it now. So now we have our I know it was removed, but we're stuck in aimed stance. So they're good to adjust that one. I made a mistake in one of the animations we put into our weapon for testing. And it's right here, SMG aim. So you want to get come up here to your idle, SMG idle, and you can just copy that. And then the combat animations for the idle. This is not the aimed one. Paste. Paste. Just gonna get that quickly. Combat animations. I'm just gonna SMG sprint forward for the sprint. And then sleep those there over body. And I think that should set the unaimed animation now. Yeah, so now we're unaimed and aimed, but we have our rifle set and you notice your weapon goes off and when it's when you're in the weapon socket it's another one i'm going to look into but for now we can just use our sockets on our hand and it will allow it to work perfectly fine i'm going to look into that weapon socket though because we're definitely going to definitely going to want it because if you're going to want to do custom animations you have an animator it's easier for the animator to use a weapon bone so they can animate weapons that move in your hand a little easier kind of um what am i looking for so animation skeleton so meshes and then all the third system skeleton and i want i'm just gonna get this socket since that's what this rifle is Weapon setup is mainly going to be the same thing as it was in Survival Game Kit when you're adding new weapon blueprints and stuff. Where is it? Oh, here it is. You want to go to your sockets. Paste in the hand iron M4. We should. Be able to sprint without leaving your hand, but you'll notice that your weapon is obviously off centered and stuff, so you 
So we'll need to do some adjustments to that, but things are going to change once we uh, set up the hand, left and right hand look and weapon locations in the animation blueprint. So I'm just going to preview the animation for now. That's going to be... I'll do the SMG idle. Let's put that on this mesh right here. It will actually give you the rotation when you're in this animation. Basically rotate the gun so it's straight. And we're going to be able to set our locations of our hands so that we'll be able to uh, see in the see prop look properly. And I'm also going to look into, we're also going to fix that uh, issue where we're not bending. I did a little digging. I'm pretty sure it might be due to this being set right here in our anim graph. So... Looking through, I make sure I didn't mess up anything there, but um, I'm gonna go to our multiplayer system anim. I'm gonna grab all of this for the right, left, and weapon transform and control C. I'm gonna control V that down right here, it's below. Try to get up just before the right hand. Look at in right here. Delete that. Now we're just going to create these. We delete this, delete this, and delete this. And basically, the same difference to that. For Sral game kit was in is in action based so if we're doing something and wiggle we can create that default variable. Now let's see what we got. There we go. That was it, yeah. So we have our default location, our rifle is still obviously a little bit off. You can adjust that in skeleton, but eventually we'll have the... Well, we're also going to set it up so we can adjust it for our weapon too, but we can easily just also... Pause this, and I believe we can just... Copy the rotation of our weapon. Paste. Copy the location. Paste. Now we have our right more centered, obviously. You go into your BPM board and you want to use just test with the SMG mess. You can see where the SMG mess is set when for the holdable item, not the pickup item. The pickup item has its own little pickup blueprint. So you'd want to change that there. I think it might actually read it from the items. Like this is what we have now. Make it sprint and it doesn't leave our hands. We can go to our third person anim. I believe it's in our update anim here. We can get rid of this calculate aim offsets function. This, we're not going to need that. I believe that was for the procedural base pitch aim. Yeah.
And also, for, so our armor can equip to our new skeleton, which we have set up our new mesh, which we're using the multiplayer system mesh, not the uh, not the uh, survival game kit one. We can go to our SK mannequin, just hit delete. You'll notice it referenced a lot of stuff. So you want to get your whatever you have your multiplayer system skeleton set to and replace references, and that will delete the skeleton, and all the references will now be referenced to the new uh, new mannequin. Multiplayer system mannequin, that is. I'm just going to pause this while this does this. I'm not sure how long it'll take. Alright, so once that's done, you'll get this pop up. You just want to save selected. It's going to fix up redirectors just in case, and there seems to be some things. Yep. Now we have that done, we should be able to equip armor to our mesh properly. You'll notice that when you equip the helmet, you're in third person, so you have your helmet, it's visible. So we're gonna de we'll deal with that in a in another video because I'm gonna redo how he, how that's done all together because it doesn't really, you don't really need to have it switching back and forth between anymore, you just need to have it set. In the set invisible while you're in this specific mode and I guess I'll set it up so that you can have it off and I'm not sure I'll, I'll look into that exactly in the in another video if I'll use his or not depending on how I've set up the system exactly so the next thing we're going to want to do is and because we did that, all of our things are closed out. So the next thing we're going to want to do is deal with our hand, left and right hand transforms, and our weapon transform. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to set it up in our master holdable. So that we can call it here. There's a a uh, reference for get get the uh, holding item, and that's a reference of the master holdable. So that's how we can get variables into our animation blueprint from here. So we're gonna go to our master holdable, and we're just gonna go to our multiplayer system game blueprints. I mean weapons and our. So I'm gonna open up my SMG and search for my mounts right here. Master weapon. Go to data table logic. You're gonna scroll down. You're gonna drag out. Weapon transform. Right hand. Left hand. We're gonna want the optic offset. And thought there was another one. Under barrel offset. Copy these for now. You can just control X or control C those compile. Don't need that anymore. Come into your master hole and paste these in. Now I'm just gonna create all these variables. Oops. And DT is because it's from the data table and the other one, so you can just go get rid of the DT if you don't want it there. I personally don't. So now you can set these per weapon in each of their weapon blueprints, for example. You can just delete these and you'll have your variables here, and they also want them instant settable. So you can edit them in each weapon's blueprint. Now we're going to our master, our third person animation right here. I'm just gonna clean this up and delete all this junk. Quick look down, make sure I got everything. 
So I need a two for now. And to me it looks like I did. And then we're gonna go to our vent graph right here. Update animation. We got our holding item. I'm gonna check if that's valid so that it doesn't try running through this when it's not when we don't when we're not holding an item. And we need to create a couple of functions. One called write and transform. These are going to be pure functions. So for the right hand transform, we're just going to go to multiplayer system, game, character animations, and open up our animation blueprint for multiplayer system. And we're just going to get our right hand transform here. Control C everything. And then we're going to go back to ours and control V. And now we have our right hand transforming, but we're getting it, but we're not going to need to get it from this character. We're going to want to get things from our, this is going to active weapon from our multiplayer system. But the way we get our weapon here is our holding item that gets our master holdable. And that's looking for the right hand transform. And that's, a, that's getting that. And the way that's set up is you split the struct here. And then it's splitting the location. And then you can hold control and you can drag each of these nodes down in like this. From this one. Oops, I missed that one. And there we go. Those are plugged in and just making sure to delete that. It's also getting our optics offset. So now we have these coming from our held weapon. And now we have this, this character reference for the crouch transform. So we're going to go to our Travel so game kit, blueprints, components, character component. Create a variable. So your crouch transform location. Set that as a transform. Let's save this. You want to get our character component, get our crouch transform, split this, and this time it's splitting the rotation. Now we simply just control and drag all of these down, control click. You just hold control and drag them all down one by one. There we go. Now the right hand transform is done. The left hand transform. This one's a little more simple, I believe. Yep. I just want to copy this in here. 
go back to your other one, paste this in. It's just so you know exactly where everything's going. Makes it a little easier to set up. You also don't need to set up this turn naming or anything. And then we're at game, we're going to get our holding item. Under barrel offset. And left hand location. Transform. Split. I'm just going to split the location like that. Drag all of these variables over here. And boom. Um, that's our left hand transform done. Go back to our update graph. And in our event graph right here, we're going to get three of these variables for our weapon transform. We'll do this one after. So we're not dealing with the big old right this moment. And we will paste this in here. And we want to get our holding item one more time. Weapon transform. And boom. Now it's coming from our, now we're getting our transforms and setting it per weapon there from our weapon blueprints i'm just going to go open up my weapon over here and i'm going to open up my smg and i'm going to look at my transforms here and they seem to be all defaulted thought that there was something different about them i'm just going to look at my test project Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Um, weapons and then in your weapon data table, that's, this is where things are set. Okay. You want to go into your features here and now when you drop these down, you'll notice there's some slight movement adjustments here. You can just copy this right hand transform. Close out of an SMG. I'm going to browse to my master holdable, and we're using this M4A4 as our test. The fuse does have videos on adding new guns and stuff. So you can add new guns doing that. And we are going, oh yeah, they'd be up near the top, I would assume. Yeah, right here. So we got our weapon, we got our weapon. right hand transform different I guess paste that there left hand paste that there and you come in here and you can make adjustments to this and this will adjust the location of your right and left hand And notice that this one is perfectly where it needs to be. But if you didn't want that mesh, I'll show you if you didn't swap out the mesh. This will also allow you so you don't actually need to move your weapon in your, so your socket or add multiple sockets. You can adjust the location of the left and right hand per gun. So you you notice that it's slightly elevated in there. You can go to your M4. And I believe so 
removing ten, exactly 10 from those just to do some testing. I haven't actually played with these variables myself. You can do that. Yes, you can see how it's lower. Obviously way too low there. So you'd want to play with those basically to adjust your left and right hand location. Just gonna run around and see what how things are looking. We're also gonna be using the aiming from multiplayer system and we're have gonna set it up so you can have a toggle aim like this where you click. I'm also gonna set up so you hold have to hold it to aim and let it go with a long aim. One more thing I just thought of from the last vehicle video, we removed our camera socket and that's actually, I've, I looked for the blueprints and I found one thing that it was actually referencing. And that was our throwable. And that was to determine where our throwable was actually coming from. So when I go to search content or survival game kit, Just gonna look for master throwable, I believe. Yep, and in here, throw block check. Yeah, right here in socket name camera. We deleted this, and then we have a camera FP now. I believe it's FP after that. I'm just going to double check multiplayer system and then you can check the skeleton to get the camera name exactly. Camera first person. I actually didn't delete it, but I'm going to delete it. So I don't want it. I don't want two cameras. Camera underscore FP is the one we're using. That would just adjust that. So now your grenades will throw from the correct location. I guess I should hold one. Hmm. It's not letting me throw it. It was letting me throw it in mine, though. I'm just clicking the wrong button. We'll do a quickly look into that. Okay, so that's one I'm definitely going to need to look into. It seems that it's playing the notifies, and it should be... ...working, but it says we're already in action, so I'm assuming there's something going on with the... ...the uh, in-action notify isn't being set over in the character component or player inventory but it is being set in the animation blueprint so i'm gonna look into that and i'll edit that one in in the future video if you end up finding out the issue i know it's definitely something small because i don't even have the issue in my other project and I, and I cannot even find what i did differently i can't even aim right now but it's something that i recently did so i'll really look over that video and fix that up for sure. But until then, that's going to be everything for this episode. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new tutorial video uploads. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below or join my community. Discord server using the link in the description. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the next one.